right, I'm sitting here in the car and I've got the IDS hooked up. I'm connected to the 16 pin. And I want to walk you around the screen first and show you some things. Now, now let's just kind of go around the screen and see what's here. In the upper left corner are the various uh, tabs, the different programs, if you will, that operate uh, IDS, tell us where we're at and what we're on. Down below at the bottom corner are again some additional tabs that are kind of some sub menus, if you will. Over here in the lower right hand corner, I've got this voltage indication. This will occasionally turn red on me. And what that's telling me is, is that IDS is getting concerned about the system voltage in the car. So you may want to put a battery charger on it or something if you're not running the vehicle, you're concerned about that. And we will see that throughout the presentation go from red to green to white like it is now. The other icon is the VCM icon, and that tells me that I am connected and I need to see that as I connect onto the vehicle. What will show up down here where my mouse is, or my pointer, if you will, right here in this lower corner, just above the VCM, is when I've made as many selections on the left-hand side of the screen as I can, and it's ready to, okay, let's go, let's do the test, a blue check mark will show up in this corner, and you hit that check mark, and that is go on to the next. And then this other icon that is pretty much on every screen you'll see is this menu icon up here in the upper right uh, corner. And I've got selections there. Right now it says print screen. Again, one of the beauties of this, guys, is that you can use this. I can print off any screen that I'm at, and then I can attach that to the repair order. Or I can take that out, use it with the customer, show it to them to back up what I'm trying to tell them about their vehicle and give, me some added, uh, give them added information uh, and me added credibility. And if you make a mistake anywhere along the line, you've got this red X right here in the center, you can see, and I just click on that and go, oh, I didn't need to do that. And let's actually hook up to a vehicle and show you that process. Now we're going to do start new session. And again, this is where this shows up as being a world tool with a 17 pin or Titan or some of these others. Uh, these are vehicles that are sold in other countries like Australia or Great Britain or places like that. Uh, I'm not interested in that. I just simply want all other. Uh, and then I select the blue tick down the lower right corner. So that's my s selections. Here's a reminder screen that tells me I should have the ignition on. I need to make all my connections uh, as shown. Uh, have the VCM hooked up, whether it's a USB or whether I'm wireless. And once I've got that, I hit the blue tick. Now, one thing you should see that right away is this blue bar go across. If that doesn't go across quickly, then you will sit here for 45 seconds and wait while it does. And the reason it wouldn't go across quickly is either you can't talk to the PCM because you forgot to turn the ignition on, or you do, this thing came, on the, came in on the hook dead, and I've got a dead PCM. And for its service publications, the PCD will tell you what, what to do and what tests to run if the scan tool doesn't communicate with the car. So you'd go into the PCD and do that. This screen comes up and, and reminds me, is it, do I have a town car? Is it a two-valve engine with a 4.6? Is it an automatic gasoline 50-state emission? This is where you can catch some vehicles that have maybe been tampered with. They might have a chip or something else. If this information right here doesn't match the emission tag under the hood, and it really should. In this case, it does, so I'm going to select yes. Now, I've got the VIN, which is already in there for me. It comes from the PCM. I'm going to put an RO number in because this is going to help me keep a record of it. So I'm going to just pick a, a number here, go into the odometer. This thing's got 19,750 miles on it, and click OK. Now here's an interesting thing. This is what I was saying, and we'll get into this whole hold, delete, save sessions later. But the same VIN was found in a previous session. I was working on this car yesterday doing some checks on it and I saved a session, and IDS is reminding me that, hey, that vehicle's already in here. Would you like to go back and reopen that session that we did before? Now, in some cases, I might choose to say yes. In other cases, I'm going to choose to say no. I'm going to choose the red X because I want to keep going on this one. And now I've got uh, my screen, my vehicle specifications up, and I can start going into some test procedures. Now the first icon I want to look at is the red toolbox up here. I'm going to select that. If I had selected that earlier before we identified this car, and by the way, I identified this car, this 2004 town car, not 2004 town cars in general like the old NGS did or some of the generic scan tools did. 
I have identified with the scan tool this specific car. Um, but if I'd gone to that red toolbox earlier, I'd see digital multimeter and oscilloscope tools. And I've got two other settings down here that are in blue, VDR and SGM. Now we don't have the adapters here, and in fact most people probably don't. I'm going to hit self-test uh, or network test depending on what my concern might be. Now the network test was actually already done by IDS when it went in and identified this vehicle. It did it in the background, and there is actually a way to find it if you wanted to. It doesn't, gives you information that's kind of engineer speak. Uh, I'm not going to run the network test. I'm going to go right into the self-test here, and I'm just going to walk you down through some of the various options. And what I've got is, is I've got all my different body tests that I can do. Uh, if I go into chassis, I can do the ABS brake system or the traction assist. Got a series of electrical. Can I do, uh, test the climate control because this has got a, a climate control module in it. Powertrain. And again, most of you guys, this is where you're going to go straight forward to. You're going to go right to the powertrain because it's a drivability concern in many cases. And so I'm going to do the key on engine off, key on engine run, or I can retrieve continuous memory codes. Now, a little uh, quick tip here. When I do key on engine off or key on engine run, I'm going to get the continuous memory DTCs with each one of those tests. So I don't have to do the continuous memory ones all, all by itself. The other way I can go in is I can go in and I can, uh, again, do uh, my test by module, or I can do this all continuous memory DTCs, and that would pull up those body and, and uh, uh, chassis codes that we saw earlier in the vehicle. So I'm going to do a, a test here. I'm going to do the engine key on, it, uh, um, key on engine off on-demand self-test and show you how that works. And so we'll hit this and, and, and let it go. Uh, first thing that's going to come up is a screen telling me that uh, I need to have everything in place. I'm going to make sure I've got the key on. Sure, I do. Uh, do not activate anything while the test is going on. I don't need the vehicle moving. It's got to be in park or neutral. Some of these other things might happen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this blue tick here. All right, once the test gets done, I'm going to get one of two screens. In this case here, I've got pass on both of my on-demand DTCs and continuous memory DTCs. Uh, if I had had any trouble codes, they would show up along with the appropriate freeze frame data over here on the help screen side. Now, at this point, I can go down to the lower left on the screen here, and I can click on the key on engine run test. We're going to get the same results on that one, so I'm, I'm going to move on to some additional things that I want to show you. Um, and again, I've got a number of ways I can get back here. I went over to the far left, lower left icon, and I went back up here into my uh, 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 DTC menu. I could have done that by clicking on the icon up here at the top. And again, what I've got here, guys, is we've got three, four, five different ways to get to the same screen. And that's because this is a computer. And again, as I said earlier, at any given screen, I can print that stuff out, and I can attach that to my repair order. I can use it to show to the customer to help uh, uh, sell or upsell whatever I need.